47, I've seen women walk. Here's a parable of what women, how they used to dress. Isaiah 47, now give me 1 Timothy 2. You know how I want about the modest. Let's see. Because often time, I'm gonna get to the point. Uh, Isaiah 47. Yeah, Isaiah 47. Here's a parable of the Most High speaking against Babylon. He calls Babylon a woman that's pretending to be a righteous woman. All right? Let's see how he describes her, how she's dressed, and what he tells her to do. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. O virgin daughter, woman of Babylon. Go ahead. Sit on the ground. Sit down. Remove yourself from authority. Because we're talking about America. Go ahead. There is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. That's a book that you know, you know the words. You know the words. You're calling it. All right. No more to be called tender and delicate, meaning noble. Hold that. Because that's God's Take death. the millstones and grind mill. This yes, she is. That's our antichina. That's our antichina. Yes, she is. Go ahead. And, and uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Now, read again. Read again. Can you hear what, he, you hear what he's saying? What have been talking like that? Okay. Read again. Take the millstones Sit and grind. Take the millstones and grind mill. Go ahead. Uncover thy locks. Uncover your hair, your locks. Go ahead. Because they had braids. Go ahead. Make bare the leg. Make bare the leg. So he's saying, take your dress, lift it up. The pool is a dress. Keep going. Make bare the leg. Go ahead. Make bare the leg. Go ahead. Uncover the thigh. Now he's saying, uncover your thigh now. Now, if you were wearing no, did you uncover your thigh? No. Go ahead. Watch. You may say, well, they're baggy. I'm going to move the thigh. I know where you're going. I know you're going to go. You're gonna go. But watch. Go ahead. Uncover the thigh. Go ahead. Pass over the rivers. I ain't saying pass, but as you go, I look just on pass over the rivers. Go ahead. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. So let's say you can pass your thighs to pants on. Can they see nakedness? Can they see this? No, it's still covered. So stop talking about pants. It's the dress she's wearing. Take your dress, lift it up, and cross the rivers. So you can all see your shame. So women wore dresses. Even during slavery, that wore dresses. During slavery, we wore pants all season long. That's why usually the doctor's office not catch infections like yeast infections. What does the doctor tell you to do? He says wear, take the pants off, what? Don't wear tight pants. Or pants at all. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I go to church, I go to the legit, uh -huh. I understand what you're saying, <coughs> but if you just said she did that to show her nakedness, uh -huh. she was showing her nakedness regardless of if it was cancer or not, so you cannot therefore call her a prostitute or a whore. Come on, I, I, now, 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 I'm glad you said that. You can't call her a prostitute or a whore, right? He's talking to the daughter of Zion, right? And you cannot call her a prostitute or a whore. Give Revelations. 17, give Revelations 17, let's see what God calls her. We can't call her that. Okay, 17 verse 4 and 5. He said, daughter of Babylon, Isaiah 47. John said the same thing. Let's see what he calls him. Matthew, Revelation 17 verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. She's a madam, a mother whore. That's what she is, Babylon. Talk about the same exact woman. You understand? That's how she, that's how she said, reveal yourself. Don't act like you modest. Reflect it yourself. Let everybody see your shame. You ain't modest. You ain't a noble woman. You ain't tender and delicate. You understand? Because understand, women wore, women wore pants when? When they start wearing pants? Oh, you gotta know the history behind it. They're gonna defend it. If they're gonna defend it, the, the, explain it. I'll explain it to you. During the 1800s, there was a woman named Amelia Bloomer. She was a women's suffrage movement, right? And you had Susan B. Anthony also. They made, they designed things called bloomers, which were made for women, women's pants. They were denounced. Get the hell out of here with that. I was wrong, because it was the miracle at the time was upholding Christian laws back then. Not anymore, now I was against it. But back then, America was strict on Christianity and laws of God. So then later on, during World War II, they had women going into the factories, the men were being gathered to war. So the women had to work, men's work, and wear overalls. You understand? And that's how the custom was going. So okay, well, if you can wear pants for this reason, why can't you wear pants? All the time. Because the whole point of changing women's apparel was to equal the men. It's all about equality, feminism. That's what it's about. Pants represent women saying, if I could do what you could do, or better. I'll tell you that woman like this, the woman just on the logo, the woman with a scarf on like this, that's the logo. She just like a dude, because that was the movement. The movement was to move women in an authority or the same authority as men. So when y'all wear the pants, you're saying that, that's why what they say, what they say is the same. I wear the pants in the house, what's that mean? 
I'm the man. But you ain't passed out. What does that say about you? I'm just as equal as you are. But that's not what the Bible says. Now you're laughing now. Now you're laughing. First Corinthians 11. No, that's what the Bible says. You go to church, it's the Bible says. Because that's what America says. That's what Master taught us. First Corinthians 11 and 3. But even his own woman don't, is not his equal. Let me, let me ask you a question. Name one woman in, in the world today that's in power because man didn't put her there. That man didn't put her there. Oh, let's Taking a long time. Play some Jeopardy for her. Play some Jeopardy music. Oh, Okay, but there is but none. At the end of the day, she mm -hmm. has a strong mind. She put herself with the help of a man. She still put herself forth Listen. to be as equal as he is. But she's not, sister. She's Why? not. You, you can be. Put her there? No, because God put God put her there to be under the man, to be support, to be supported, to be a, a backbone. Do you understand? The man. Listen, 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 listen. Now, see, look at you. See, you said you got mad about submission. That's your problem. That's why, as many of our mothers. And your mothers and his mothers and fathers are single today for that same reason, that same anger. Right. I ain't found no man. We follow the right man all the time. Right. People will say to us, God can't, you can't judge. But guess what? You don't pay child support. Who do you go to? <coughs> the judge. You're ordered to pay so and so in arrears. Thousand. What white woman's like, yes, yes. He's a judge. I'm the only God can judge. When it comes to the white man judging, now the son is, is quiet. Hush, right. hush. When we judge, only God can judge. You go to jail. He gave you a judgment. You got 10 years in prison. That's a judgment. That's right. You got a party well, ticket. That's a judgment. As a it's still a judge. It's human they're human beings. Oh, look at you. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you. You want to go? All right. I'm not a follow up to you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know. That the head of every man is Christ. It's the New Testament, by the way. Read again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So our head, who we're submissive to, submissive to, is Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So Christ has submission also. He submits himself to his father. So it's submission all the way around. Why can't y'all accept that? We accept Christ as our... As our as, um, being over us, why can't y'all accept that? Because you have been trained through slavery to go against us. It's very, very simple. You understand? It's a very simple um, element. Get numbers, 20, numbers 27 and 16. Let's see what Paul got it from. Numbers 27 and 16. Numbers chapter, numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. See that? Set a man over the congregation. That's how Paul said a man's ahead. That don't mean you two guys are nothing. Get verse Timothy 2 now. First Timothy 2 and verse 11. You're going to get mad, but I'm being out anyway. Because it's going it's to it's reach a point. First Timothy 2. But understand, a lot of, of y'all out here today are being taken to child support. Your wives don't respect y'all. You're getting they're smacking you in the face. They don't respect y'all. Why? Because you're not applying God's laws in your household. Your household is an uproar. You understand? Your mother's out of control. Even some of your father's out of control. For not following the most high's orders. Read. First Timothy 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Or what? With all subjection. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. That mean be over a congregation. Because she can teach her children. You understand? When her husband's not around. Go ahead. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Nor to do what? Nor to usurp authority over the man. That's what that represents right there. That represents that right there. That's why they're against the Bible. So you used to say, if I was to wear short skirts to show my thighs and show my nakedness, that I am beneath you. No. I'm saying that that's an abomination in the eyes of God. Now you're beneath me. You be First off, understand. If a man would wear that, he'd be, he'd be beneath the most high. Right. All of us, all of them would. There's no, there's no discrimination there. This, the order is that regardless of what you wear, the woman's role is to be submissive to the man, as man's role is to be submissive unto Christ and Christ under God. That's the order, regardless of what we all wear. You understand? We don't. Verse 12, verse 13. For Adam was first formed. Now he's giving you a reason why we're ahead of y'all. Read again. For Adam was first formed. Because Adam was first formed. Go ahead. Then Eve. Then Eve. Why then Eve? Go ahead. 
And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. That's an Eve sin and so on and so forth. Okay, first you write Adam was, but where was he born from? A rib of a woman. No, she can't. No, you gotta listen around. Okay, Your chances okay. now. You got around. What's woman mean? What does woman mean? Woman. woman? What does it mean? The word woman mean? A female. It means out of thank you, out of man. You came out of us, not the not the around. You gotta twist it around. Genesis two, verse twenty one. <clears throat> it's the King James version, not international, only King James. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Upon Eve. Upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. That's literal. Go ahead. And the ribs which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. That's called marriage right there. The most high said, Here's your wife. I saw usually the father presents the wife to the, to the husband, to the groom. The father saying, Here's Eve. Here you go. That's marriage. Go ahead. And Adam said, Not his girlfriend, not his jump off. Not a sugar mama, not baby mama. That's not in the Bible. That's right. Go ahead. And Adam said. Not sugar daddy or baby daddy. Not disrespecting any of you because my family is the same thing. But that's not in the Bible. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This is my woman. Go ahead. She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman because Adam is naming her. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Woman means out of man. Out of man. So y'all come out of us. I'll get Genesis 3 and 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to find out why Paul said y'all must be submissive to us. Let's see where he got it from. About y'all being submissive. It's no way in Genesis 3, 16. But she followed who instead of Adam? She followed the devil instead of Adam like y'all do today. Following America, following the philosophies of America, right. we're equal, 50-50. That's not in the Bible. Right. We just read that, that the most size ahead, the most size ahead, Christ is under, then, then Christ is over us, then the man and the woman. Right. But America says no. Satan says no, woman. Equal. Wear pants like them. Have to take the same jobs as them. Do what you can't do, we can do. You can't. It's not possible. I'm going to tell you how. Majority of men in prison, what are they, what are they, what are they lacking? No, fathers. Sad to say, there's education also, but, but the, primary, the, prim the primary thing in a household is that they lack, women too, lack fathers. They lack fathers. Women feel they can do it on their own, and some of y'all can. But for the most part, many, many of our sisters, my, my, my uncle, my also, my mother, they have failed us. How? They raised us according to what? Celebrate Christmas, celebrate Thanksgiving, celebrate birthdays, Halloween, New Year's. Where are these in the Bible? Have a girlfriend. Oh, we protection. All that means is, listen, have sex all you want, do what you want, to just protect yourself. That's, that's madness. That's a risk. That's like a gamble. You understand? You're telling your child to do that. That's against the laws of God. The Bible deals with marriage. Mothers, fathers, sons and daughters. Not boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, jump offs, baby daddy. Baby daddy. That's baby. not in the Bible. But our parents raise us. There's a cycle. And it has to end. We come out here to break it. Y'all get mad at us. Because you like things the way they are. And get mad at us, we try to bring change. Because black and Hispanics, y'all hate change. Right. You cannot stand it. You understand? Just like when Christ brought change to y'all, you killed him. It's the same thing. Right. Christ y'all bring change to y'all, crucify him. Crucify him. It's the same thing to y'all do it to us today. It's That's the same right. spirits back again on That's the earth. Right. It never changed. That's right. Read on. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. See, I went about her babies, you're in pain. Because Eve went against Zip. Adam. Zip. You understand? So Zip. God Zip. said, for that, you're going to be in pain when you bring forth children. That's God reminding you that what? That you're supposed to follow who? Be under who? Adam. Read again. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's why I have contractions. Because you went against your man during Eve's time. And you're doing it again today. When you have the labor pains, that's God telling you, the man's your head. The man's your head. The man's your head. Like, no! Epidural! Epidural! That don't last. It don't work. I got five kids. I tell you, it don't work. Five from the same woman that I am married to. Legally. Not my baby mama. You understand? But we deal with marriage in this organization. You understand? Of one wife. On the new covenant, when they have one wife. Not multiple one wife. 
as the scriptures say. Right. Read on. I'm going to take care of those wives too and those children. Right. Not jump offs, not sugar mamas. Read. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Come on. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Your sorrow is the menstrual pain. So I got the menstrual, they call it, the Bible calls it just sickness. The cramps, that's from God telling you, listen, Eve, remember Eve? Remember Eve? Remember Eve? And you out there cramping? Oh, give me the pad. That's from God. That's God saying to you, remember Adam? Let me listen to Adam. Let me listen to Adam. Remember that? That's going to remind you over and over again, every month. Every, but what, what do white man do? He created pills that can stop it. I'm a, you can have your period three times a year. You get blood clots, cancers, you drop dead, because that's against orders of God. That's right. But the white man says, no, I got pills for y'all. You can delay that. You can get rid of that. The hell with the man. I got something for you to, to avoid that, that pain. Epidurals, epidurals don't work. Come on. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Come on. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. So desire to learn shall be from your husband. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. He shall what? And he shall rule over thee. Look at, look at your face. Look at you. Look at you. Rule over me. Oh my God. He's not black. Sister, come on. That's the, that's, that, that face right there, that's the face of America. That anger is the face of our enemy. You do that, that's the reason why many of us are single mothers and fathers today. Right. Because y'all refuse to be submissive, not to a drug dealer or a crackhead, no, no, no. We're not saying that. But to a righteous man, your man has to change. In order for the household to get in order, the man it starts the man first. Right. Right. That's how I always was. I saw that in slavery, what they do? Took the man out the house. And, and, and sold us in auction blocks. They always targeted the men. Even in today's society, they target the men. In school, they make boys more effeminate. On the cartoons that most kids watch, they make the kid, the cartoon characters, more feminine. The men are dumb. The girls are smart. Right. You watch the cartoons. I have five kids. I watch it. I analyze the TV. I'm like, why, why, the, why the husband's so damn dumb? Right. The wife goes, come on, dear. Come on, dear. Okay, honey. Dumb as hell. They're reversing the roles. They're changing the orders of God. That's the problem. And that's why when you say submission, you're like, oh, niggas. I understand. I understand that. But at some certain point in time, sister, but you're going to ask yourself, when does it stop? When does the disorder stop? Yeah. When? Start with you? Your kids' kids? Your kids' kids' kids? When? So someone dies? More baby mamas? More baby daddies? It has to end somewhere with someone. There's someone going to stop it. Y'all don't want to stop it. Y'all want to attack with the call us niggas. You guys have a cult. You hate, we love our people. We're out here in the blistering heat for you. That's right. When we have jobs, don't get it twisted. I have, I'm going to tell you myself, I have three jobs. That's right. And five kids, one wife I take care of. That's right. She stay home, take care of my kids, take care of our kids. Right. That's right. Educate them. Right. That's in my house. What about y'all? Where are your father your kids? That's right. Where are your mother your kids? Hell, where are your kids? Outside hoeing? Going to clubs, getting drunk, right. getting knocked up, while you take care of their kids? Should be ashamed of yourselves, man, for even speaking evil of us. That's right. Be ashamed of yourselves. That's right. We are living examples. We're trying to be. Right. We're, not, we're not perfect, but we strive to be perfect. We strive. As you should, but I refuse to do that. Because you want to remain niggas in society. Right. And America don't accept you. Your president is responsible for all the abortions out here. Obamacare. He pees the one that profits off of y'all killing y'all babies. Y'all, there's more baby murders than any other murders out here. Gang violence, diabetes, AIDS, high cholesterol. Y'all killing babies at an alarming rate. Why? What the dad say all the time? What you gonna do? I ain't know it's mine. Or what y'all say? What we gonna do? I look good. I got a big butt. I'm with my figure. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna kill this child. I wanna have fun. I wanna go to the clubs. I'm too young. That's what y'all say. 90% of the abortions are from women who say they're too young. Not from rape, not from incest. 90% of the abortions are from women who say, I'm not ready yet. But you're bold enough.
to them going to do if they have no clothes to wear what is reading a scripture going to do for them nothing let's get that in james now james told you about you faith only brothers with the other red and axis there was a system in place okay people are going to come to us after we read them the scriptures let's put something in place so when they come to us we can hope them. this truth is about building the nation of israel they're going to come in sick. They're going to come in naked. They're going to come in hungry. Mm.